So um, after you uh, did the second virtual call uh, by yourself, uh, we would do this uh, short walkthrough that I talked about. And we would have this virtual call that uh, call IEX, and we would analyze which V table is being used, which function exactly, and also we would check uh, if there is anything else that is special about this virtual call. So if we uh, go backward and analyze uh, what we see, so we can see that this pointer is being stored in IEX, and that we um, later put the reference the uh, object that we have in offset 18 hex. If you remember from uh, the previous example, and also if you're not, I will of course show you. So in an uh, offset 18 hex, we will have the uh, second uh, inherited object. So if we want to examine the uh, structure of the coffee table again, we can see that in offset 18, this is the beginning of the uh, table object. So because the coffee table inherits from a uh, two different uh, objects, so we would have first the part that is relevant for the furniture, and then we would have in the second part all the uh, relevant members and V table of the table, which is the second inherited uh, class. So in our case, we have table. Like in previous examples, what we would do is that we would have to analyze the table object to understand what we have in this offset exactly. And um, we can assume it's the V table again, but we will check. Uh, we will check it. when we look at the uh, table object. We can see that in the first offset, we have the V table at offset zero, as we uh, um, thought about and suggested before. Um, but like we did in the previous uh, virtual call, we also need to understand what is the exact uh, function that is was used in this case. So if we uh, look at assembly again, what we can see is that we are using the first offset inside this V table. So we are dereferencing the uh, RX uh, with uh, offset zero and putting it in RX again. And uh, this means that when we uh, will call Rx, it will uh, store the uh, function from the first offset of the table v table. So if uh, we go back to the constructor of uh, the coffee table and the table, we would see that the v table that is used uh, inside the coffee table constructor would be uh, this v table that I uh, show you here. And the first, uh, in the first offset, in the offset zero, we would have the function uh, table set legs. So this is one of the functions that is part of the base class, which is table. But of course, this is um, what we uh, understood from uh, the assembly. So it's really nice to see that even if we have two virtual calls from uh, two different V tables, the process of understanding uh, which function it is and which V table is used is quite similar. So now we know that the virtual call here uh, would be table set legs. And another thing that you might notice is that we also have a parameter used for this function call. So because this is a function uh, that receives an integer as the parameter, we would also have to set it uh, in the assembly. So in this case, the parameter is set in ESI and is the number three. And this number would be passed to the function and set legs, like you can see uh, in uh, this assembly snippet. After we uh, finish the analysis of the virtual calls, uh, we can summarize what we learned so far and what we understood. So if we want to summarize everything, so uh, creating the object structures in IDA is very important. This is um, a very important thing to understand because if you saw what we did during the virtual call analysis, that it was to go back to the structure of the relevant object, analyze it again, see which V table was used from which uh, of the base classes that it inherited from, and 
if we would not create the structures, the process would take much longer. Don't think about like this specific example, but about bigger and more complex binaries. In those cases, if you would not uh, create the structures properly, if you would not uh, create everything around the object, so you it would be very hard to understand each time and what is the exact uh, virtual call that is used in there. And it will also would be very hard to understand the logic of the code. So I cannot um, explain to you how much, time, how much time it takes, but also how profitable it can be if you do that so. So um, this is like a, a tip for me. Um, also, uh, another thing that we learned in this video is that examining the object structure uh, is very useful to understand the vtables and the virtual calls. And in each virtual call, you would have to uh, analyze the uh, vtable that it was uh, using and also the specific offset inside of uh, the vtable. And this is, uh, besides getting the vtable, the process of understanding which function exactly is used is very, um, very similar to the basic inheritance part. Another thing that we learned is that when we do the static analysis of the virtual calls, it takes uh, time, but it's actually uh, quite uh, repeatable after you understand the process. So we go back, analyze the P table, analyze the uh, offset inside of it, and uh, analyze mostly the assembly and do a lot of reversing. So uh, this is in general um, what we learned so far. Uh, I hope you find it useful and we will have another exercise now. Thank you.